We have a new sponsor of ad spend. Do you hate money? Well, if you hate money, you're going to hate retention.com. If you love money, you're going to love retention.com. And you're going to hear a little bit more about them later in the show. But you can go sign up right at retention.com if you can't wait till then. Enjoy the episode of ad spend exclusively on the Triple Whale Network. We deal with this because when people come and interview us, like, oh, we're, your costs need to be less than the cost of an in house team. Not only do our costs need to be less than an in house team, our costs now need to be less than an in house person with AI tools. So we're, we're having these questions, we're having these, these back and forth discussions, even though the, the person that would engage with us or the person that would engage with any marketer, they're thinking about this and they would never need it to be there. And then they're thinking about the economy or where it potentially could be going. And they're going like, could I make this? Could it get me close to the outcome that I need? I just need it to be incrementally better. I don't need it to be amazing. And can I save money doing it? All right, folks, we're back with another episode of your favorite D2C podcast. And we have the D2C godfather himself, Jack GPT in the flesh. You guys are getting a real treat. I think the last time you were on, you were perusing like the streets of Spain, finding cell service, dropping bars, eating pizza. <laughs> but that, but but now he he's back, and it was still the best episode we've ever had. <laughs> it was it, to be fair, it, was it did kind numbers. Of fire, Just, dude. Kind of fire. It was kind of fire. The kid does numbers. What can I say? You need to you need a bump on the pod. You have the shack attack on. But speaking of doing numbers, we have the man with the plan, my partner in crime, the best co-host in the business, Ashwin Walani. Ash, welcome. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. I actually want to start out with a little bit of current news. What do you guys, and I'll start with you, Shaq, and then we'll go to you, Ash. What do you guys think about the Shopify stuff? So for people that don't know, Shopify um, just let go of 20% of their people, um, unfortunately, but we're, we're seeing that is kind of becoming a trend. But to be fair, a lot of these big tech companies got a bit over their skis in terms of their hiring with the bull market. That's semi-interesting. But what really interested me was um, they bought Deliver, what, I think two or three years ago? I can't remember. But it was a massive, massive uh, play in terms of logistics, et cetera, et cetera. And they basically pawned that off on Flexport for an all-equity deal. Um, is this the white flag to Amazon where it's like, hey, we don't do logistics well. We're just going to figure out our core competencies. And then the second follow-up question is, with that being gone, that kind of takes away the the verticality that they're going for, right? Because they started penetrating POS and the last thing was really, if you could get off a of 3PL because you're not big enough to have your own distribution, you could leverage Shopify. So Jack, with all that being said, where do you land? What are your thoughts? What does this mean for the DTC business? So in the research that I found, they did fire majority of them from the logistics area. Well, that would make sense then, right? Based off the what I'm looking at, and I use layoffs.fyi. I think that's probably one of the bigger trackers of all the people that are getting fired and laid off. The first tool drop in not even two minutes and 30 seconds. Like, we, we got a pro here, people. <laughs> Jeez, I'm the first time on a pod, guys. <laughs> but think about it like this. We had a really interesting situation that happened at growth on 2020, 2021. Shopify is thinking everybody's going to be incredible business. You, we all know intimately the majority of the Shopify stores are the ones that are on the, the most minimal plan. Now that's, I'm not saying that make up the majority of the revenue, but the majority of the users are going to be that very small plan. So a lot of these, as you know, we're not going to make it through. Like what is that? What is the acronym? We're all not going to make it. NGMI. That's NGMI, bro. They hit it. So I, I see you're looking at it and it's, it's almost, it, they had it coming. Google, Facebook, and all the other ones already did it. They're kind of late to the game to get rid of them. Even though they did do it after they turned a profit. To be fair, the stock popped. I think it's up 25, 27% after or, uh, today, including their after hours pop from their, their quarterly earnings. Yeah, I mean, the, the market's definitely rewarding that. My only, well, let me get my pushback, but let me get uh, Milani's take first. Where, where do you, where'd you land on all this, Ash? I mean, I feel like it's the same phenomenon that's happened with everybody else right and just like Shaq said it's like they're kind of like the last to do it it's just you you've had this like growth momentum over the last couple of years and recession inflation hits and it's just like well they took a bet they spent money on hiring more they couldn't keep up with growth and this is just the, the outcome of it right um so I'm not surprised um but curious what your, your thoughts are do you think they go towards AI like this is the biggest thing is you have a a major growth and then they're like well i don't know if we actually need people for these things 
Let's go AI. You guys said something really interesting that I didn't realize was Shop makes the majority of their money from payment processing, from Shop Pay, which is, which is crazy. And so one, I'm still super bullish on Shopify, but my bear case take is they, this is the challenge of being a public company is that you are measured on your quarters. And so there can be some very short term thinking because you need to, like, you can't just keep taking haircuts. Like that's where, like, I wasn't kind of quote unquote defending the Cloudflare CEO. I think Cloudflare is a great company. I took a huge loss on it. I put a bunch of money in and I didn't net out. But I think at the end of the day, what I'm trying to get at is there needs to be a narrative and some sort of like heads roll when you take these types of haircuts. And so I, I think Shopify did the right call. I just worry that if you're not going to be this all in one data C commerce solution, because you don't have this logistics play anymore, where are you can get the growth? Cause, cause you're a payment processor essentially like to your guys' yeah. point, they, they don't make that much money. Like the plus stores, they make a little bit of money on, but they make the majority of their money from shop pay and payment processing. So the bear case is like, where do, where do you get the growth from? The things I did see is, are they trying to integrate with, I mean, that have been Facebook. I think someone's going to start paying. They pay like a percentage. I actually take it back. I think that's Facebook shops. It's Facebook, Instagram. They're really yeah. trying primarily the first data play, first party data play. Cause if you process the transaction on there, then you can uh, track everything legally versus if you Clear. buy it on site. But there's also lending, right? I don't know how much of their business comes from lending. Not a bunch right? of money, but their their lending actually went uh, through the roof. I think they lent forty percent more quarter over quarter. Um, what or maybe thirty eight percent, something like that. Um, what's what do you guys think of that though? Because like, I think it's a all, bad time. all these other yeah that yeah because nobody else is for, the money. for the ecosystem for the ecosystem right the you, you're. For most people, like shop's going to be the last like place you get money from, and so I think it's not a great sign for the longevity of D to C. But you know, I could, I could hear be me, wrong, but yeah, hear me out on this. You you log into your Shopify dashboard, and it says you're eligible for X dollars. That's up in front of your face. Like you you don't you might not even be right. searching for it, but that pops. Yes, but let me push back on you there. Uh, I actually just, the uh, reason I was late, I was on a podcast with uh, a gal that is, uh, runs her own fund called Red Bike, really nice, right? Rachel, really nice gal. But that Very was cool. one of her uh, kind of shticks was that if I'm giving you this money, you need to tell me like why you need it and how you're going to deploy it. And so one of the kind of siren songs is kind of what you're talking about. Just because the money's there doesn't mean you need to take it. And so like, that's what, that's what worries me is like, why are all these people taking all this money? Is it really to grow? Because like, candidly, do D to Cs are terrible, terrible investment vehicles. Like, like I can't think of a VC backed D to C brand that actually had any sort of return on investment. Can you guys think of any big ones? Public? Uh, not even public. Just any 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 D to C company. Everyone that I know that took a bunch of money because there's a certain aspect of like, what do you do with the money? With Brez, right? If I gave you $10 million today with Brez, which is, won't even ship it to me in Texas, so I'm still salty about that, but whatever. Um, <laughs> like, what would you do with the 10 million, right? Like, you guys aren't capital constrained, you're market constrained. So no amount of money is going to help you overcome that market constraint. It's it hurt, like, you guys have enough money to operate. It's just, you have to operate efficiently because money's not going to solve your problem. Correct. And what we're in a, minute, in a more unique situation is because federally, we can't even go into major states. Like we can only legally sell into 33 states. Ah, so I, so you do love me. So it's not, I thought you were mad at me. No, I, <laughs> New York can't get it. Texas can't get it. We're trying. Isn't it hilarious too? Texas, don't tread on me. Oh, by the way, you, you, freedom when you want it, but not, hey, anyways. No, we, we, we think about this too. If, I, if we were going to take money on it, Aaron and I talked about it. If we were going to take any money on it, would basically, we'd do roadshow, we'd do events, we'd do pop-ups. We'd have to do boots on the ground because that's the only way that we can get in front of people for them to experience it, to get real feedback, which in in your mind, you're like, okay, well, isn't that what Allbirds and isn't that what Warby Parker and these guys do where they had to open stores? But the overhead was way too much. We probably wouldn't do overhead. We just kind of place, do a, go to a place, go to a shop and then close it down. Okay, let's get into them. That was kind of, unless you guys had any other... Uh... Latest, greatest breaking news that you wanted to jam on. I got a text from my rep, uh, Meta rep, saying we might oh, get refunds yes. in two weeks. Spill some tea, you, like for yeah. the, the whole 25? Or, or is it going to so, be? So I don't know. Like even they don't really know what the 
the details are. It's just like as time gets closer, we'll get more details, this and that. I asked, I was like, how much? And right. no idea. So again, at least there's an acknowledgement that something is coming. And I just really <laughs> hope it's not 12 just cents. 17 you know? cents so, in your account. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of something that slaps when you log in the ads manager, you see that $17 added back. Let's go, kid. I can't even, can't even get Chipotle. Can you get your poll over this? Need, I don't need that shop loan no more. Facebook just credited me sixteen dollars and forty three cents. It's just crazy to me that that will get credited back, and then instantly the next day we've spent it. Like that's it's insane. It's like house money. How are things in agency world, Shaq? What do you, what do you guys got going on there? What's happening there? Did you guys feel any weirdness with the uh, Facebook debacle? How how is life in the agency land? Our, we're we're a little bit thicker, right? So we around 88 employees dang we i didn't have, know you guys are big that's awesome yeah and that's i don't i, I think we're i'm probably missing some part time or contractors that that support us on sure. some areas but ftes but for the most for the most part like on the paid media site we had more people unaffected than we did affected interesting so our we have really we have a great rep he is he is super on it and even him he's like look I have to hit you with an email. I'll let you know. Here's what we're, wait, here's what I have to say. But he also goes, oh, here's what I, I actually don't know what's going to happen. So, so although I have to tell you this, I don't know what actually is going to happen. Vibe is okay. It was really difficult because when you manage other people's money, and you guys might be able to relate to this, when you manage other people's money, no matter what happens, it's your fault because you didn't proactively or, or, or go above and beyond and be like, hey, this has just happened because it's always reactionary because no one's anticipating a significant overspend after you've been living in the account for quite a while. And and you there's like a way it acts, there's like a behavior of it. And then all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, you just spent, I don't have an answer because I don't know what happened. So I start seeing some of my buyers or my team try to fabricate a reason why when at the end of the day, it's just, it just happened <laughs> and it's hard. But, but if you were to explain that to a brand, so if I was managing a- Ash's ads, I'd be like, Hey, I think this is what happened. I'm not too sure, but I, I'm, I'm so sorry. It might not have been me, but at the end of the day, it's just like, Hey, I don't know what happened. This shit, but this did happen. He might not take that answer. He might just be like, well, why aren't you paying attention to it? You know, the first thing I thought of when I like opened up my phone and I looked at this, right. And it was like negative 25,000 net profit. I was <laughs> like, oh, Lord, I can't run. <laughs> like, I <would> no. <laughs> so I was like, we might not catch it. <laughs> like, we'll have to look at it later. But then, like, yeah, you dude. open up Twitter and you're like, oh, like, this happened to everyone. You're like, all right, dude, like, this just happened. And, like, it's not me. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. It's sad. First reaction is, oh my God, this is not my fault. Somebody's going to kill me. Yeah. And second reaction is like, well, for us, it's like, do I have to fund this? Do I have to pay them back their money that they overspent? Do I have to not bill? Like, it, it put us into this interesting scenario. Thankfully, we didn't have too many issues. We had a couple people that overspent, so we're waiting for the, the words back from Facebook. Their fault, your problem. And it's a terrible place to yeah. be. It's a terrible place to be where you're... Because you're, I'm a big believer people experience the world in stories. And like you said, Shaq, like there was, there, there's just not a thing to tell, but there was no way to come across competent. Where it was just nope. like, oh, by the way, we spent all this money, but I don't know why. Like... That's that doesn't fly. But then on the other side, by like, spinning some web web of like, I don't want to call wise or untruths, but just trying to scramble for a reason isn't a great place either. So you, you just kind of fucked if you do, fucked if you don't. It's just a, a challenging position for agencies. I think. I didn't. You guys like did brands hit you guys first and say like, oh, what just happened, or like you, the buyers caught it first. Well, buyers caught it first, so we actually had two buyers that caught it first. On because it was Sunday, it was like this weird. Su- it was like weird set Sunday before we even jumped into it. It was like so, war- so, so we had to jump in and we had to go. Basically, it was like, hey, this happened. Cool. Flag all the account IDs. Flag all the uh, campaign IDs. Tell me what the ad IDs were. So I needed a list of all three of those things. Then I would go hit the rep and be like, hey, here's the affected accounts. Here's a screenshot of hour over hour spend because we didn't necessarily know. Some brands like, oh, that's just like a normal CPM or it was close to the CPM. It didn't spike too much, but we needed to have like hard evidence of all of it. Then we go back, go to bat for them. But the brands didn't notice until the, the morning of, but we needed to have like a unified message to explain to them and then also explain yeah. here's a process of what we need to do to protect it. But in this case, there was no overspend or like a, 
a, a, a hard switch kill because there's there's nothing that would trigger it. But if you're managing like a ton of accounts, right, and you're seeing like I would imagine like ninety percent of them like go through this, isn't like in your mind like oh no, this is a Facebook thing like right off the bat. Oh, hundred percent. That was that was our inner answer. We're like, hey, it was actually screenshots from Twitter so that everybody was experiencing it. David Herman, I love my mind. My man, David Herman. D hers. D hers, baby. Let's if go, you ever, If you ever are wondering if you are alone, he's the man. <laughs> tap in. Leave so, this so the best. I always screenshot his stuff, anybody that comments it, and then I post it on my Facebook. I was like, hey, it was actually pretty genius. Ready for this one? Whoever's had the largest egregious overspend, I'll Venmo you a coffee. And so I had the whole thread of just all these people posting on my Facebook. So I just like screenshot of this and sent to the rep. Oh, that's amazing. Smart. <laughs> Big brain. Brick brain mirrors over here. Not not <laughs> testimonials. Not just not just tattoos over here. What are you most excited about? You got your new podcast. You got Geek Out or Geek X. RIP yeah. artist formerly known as Geek Out. Uh you got Geek X coming out. What 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 what's what's what are you excited about in Shackling? Get the wedding. I mean, there's, oh, got the there's tons of stuff on here. Man. I'm, I'm excited to no longer... I have like a couple more tattoos left, but I finished the entire body. So I'm fully covered, except like obviously Robo my, Shack. my face. My uh, Robo Shack is here, full, full-fledged. full 15 months, 200 plus hours of, of ink, done. Less than full to be finished. So I'm now like, now I'm like, what do I do on my Mondays? Like, what do I do during, throughout the week? So I'm excited to get some time back. Um, the wedding is in about... 35 days so i'm excited to be abroad get this done i'm excited for this geek x in my uh not miami sorry geek x in la may 19 2021 so i'm excited for this event this is the first in person we've done of the year so i'm really happy about i know this. right because you had the san diego sketch with the uh, blood eating stuff so this is the first big one you've had how yeah actually this will be interesting. Give us some color in terms of the the different options now. Because you guys have a, a digital arm now, or I haven't played around with it. I think there's Slack channel, or whatever. But yeah, yeah, color color in the lines there. We did we did so it's called the Geek Hub, and it's more of like the online community. It's kind of like the Foxwell Group, and it's kind of a oh yeah, other, yeah, it's agency brand and marketers. But what I realized in this area, brand owners, unless you're like Ash, where you're like actively running ads and you're really in it, you're you're actually an execution brand owner the people that are talking are gonna be marketers because they're, they're yep. they have so much going on so it's really difficult in my opinion to find an online community that's extremely active that's just brand yep. owners that aren't asking questions about like who should i work with who's this 3pl like i think the workspace six guys do actually a better job where it's not ongoing combo it's more major topics that people can kind of chime in with we did we did the most recent one at my house it was like tax, it was like wealth, and it was like understanding what to do once you have some money. And that was a really cool, cool test, which is why we rebranded to Geek X. So it's more of like yeah. an experience of, of new things. I think it'll be the I think it'll be the future if we do much less events and then when we do them, make them much bigger. So that when someone's looking, they're like, All right, what what events am I doing this year? I'm gonna do this one in Q one. Okay, I'll do that one in Q two, rather than it being like so, try to choose one of five of them throughout the year. I'm excited for it. I I that was one of the most transformative meetings in my life with, uh, what was it 2021 with right off the, the back of COVID. And honestly, man, that was, I know it was economically challenging for you guys, but because uh, uh, LA and California had all those COVID laws, it was like the tightest thing. It was like 80 people and you were still kind of probably skirting the, the, the maximum capacity you're allowed. But the, the, one of the, my favorite parts about your events is, and I'll stop gassing you up after this, but it's, when you go to, because I'm the B2B SaaS world now, when you go to B2B SaaS conferences, dude, nobody will tell you anything. Like, it is all proprietary. It's all black box. And that was one of the most shocking experiences of my life was going to GeekX. And you have Sharma. You have all these, like, absolute killers in the space that are the most friendly, awesome people. Oh, how do you do this? Oh, people pulling out their laptops to show yeah. you the actual campaign architecture in their own ads manager. Like, that will never, or I haven't experienced that in B2B SaaS. B2B SaaS is so insular. Um, and I think what you guys did with uh, GeekX and unlocking that is a, it's a, it's a really, really Dude, awesome feat. Do, do you know what it really is? It's like, and Ash and I were kind of talking about this before we jump live. It, it It's starting to affect me because now it is, just, you have to, you have to have sponsors because it's expensive. 
then you have the brands that don't necessarily want to be pitched, but they want the information yes. they want to meet other people. And then you have the marketers that want to be able to be a part of the ecosystem, share, and they're the ones that have a lot of the learnings. Yep. And then you have the agencies that employ all these marketers that want to be a part of it. They still want business, but they also want to be connected with other agency owners and marketers for potential employees. So you have this giant ecosystem that somebody has to fund, yet the most of the people don't want to pay to get there, but they also value being there. Yes. So it's it's a lot of this shit that goes on, and I'm sitting here in the mirror going like, Yo, we don't we don't make enough on this for it to even be this big of a deal. So how do we how do we afford? So if I think about this, the the best way of going about doing this is having a lot of little things to where the person that is footing the bill is most likely a SaaS team, yep. it's most likely a credit card. You know, God, why not? They, they they help the ecosystem move forward. Understand that you're about to walk into that. Give them the time of day, and then go on your go on the rest of your day after you heard them make a couple words. I love it. Is uh, Australia still on the docket or is that still 100%? More... Australia has oh, to happen. Okay. It has to happen. I think that's a really right market. And for DTC owners out there, if you suffer from seasonality, this is a hack I learned from Chris Mead, um, really start to get and figure out how you can penetrate Australia because they're inverted seasons to the States. And so um, you can start to really start to level out those peaks and valleys and start to attack some of that seasonality. The final thing, the final thing would have to be the launch of Breeze, like actually oh, getting yeah. a product, actually getting oh, a Breeze. product out there. I've been calling it Brez this whole time. It's okay. You're, you're, That's why you're, I didn't send you. <laughs> That's why I didn't send it, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable, this man. It's been interesting to run a THC CBD drink on Facebook and all these other channels. Like it's not easy. That's for, that's for one. But it's actually an incredible How are you doing drink. It? Yeah, spill some tea. This is a tactics podcast. Okay. All right. Well, if you, Aaron, don't don't listen to this part. But like compliantly to actually run this, you you have to put. You can't directly link from ad into the where walled you, garden. Like, no, it's not necessarily walled garden. It's still it's okay. too. They can think about like you have to go two clicks deep. Information on education on hemp hemp derived THC is complying within the policy. I love it. So keywords hemp derived THC. I didn't see love the it. amount. So if you if you I'm not going to give it away, but if you re re engineer or reverse engineer our ads, if you get hit with it, you'll be able to see where we drop you on what part of the lander and what are the terminologies of the lander and how many clicks it gets you before you can actually make an action or purchase. And won't give you the fish, he's gonna teach you how to fish. Go go sneak on this ads library, follow this landers. Look, I don't want to, like, it's hard. Like we, we got this live and it's really difficult to keep it going. But I would say Twitter is our biggest place that we're going. They're, they're welcoming it. They're, they're like, THC, CBD, bring it, bring all your money. So we're, yep. we'll be leading into them aggressively very, very soon. I think we're actually live this week with like a couple hundred bucks. Anywhere else, like Snapchat or no? No, not Snapchat. Snapchat's actually weirdly stricter than Facebook. Google, they're getting Google that. we really want. I saw a lot of sex products on Snap. I got actually hit with, uh, I don't think the targeting is completely wrong, but I got hit with like how to like extend yourself on Facebook the other day. I don't know how I got into that bracket. I don't know how I got into that bracket. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Retention.com isn't just sponsoring ad spend and Retention.com isn't just there to help you grow your email funnels. They're also an amazing resource for marketers. Check out their podcasts, check out their YouTube channel, check out their resources, including the five fundamental marketing flows you need to grow. Get all of that at Retention.com. The link is in the description below. Wait, so Shaq, honestly, real question, right? You're, you're doing bad which in itself is hard to do on DC. Yes. Then you're doing THC and CBD, right? The question I have is like, why? So well put. Shipping water, the shipping water is so expensive. So this is this is like the Celsius, the Nordic. This is um, twelve ounces. So twelve ounces. Our our cans like this size. Oh, okay. So it's much smaller, and we ship it in like the six pack. We don't, and right now to kind of ship it, it's two two dollars and fifty cents a can. This big. So it's not profitable on first purchase, and the only ads, the only the the, the revenue that we're coming in has been basically organic from our own channels promoting it. So yep. in terms of profitability, yep. it's definitely not profitable yet. But we have to know we run ads because the bigger play here is that THC and CBD. It can only be certain in California. It's a little bit different because you have to be at a dispensaries. But if it's hemp derived, which we are, we can be at 
like a normal shop. We can be at a, a, a at a bodega. We can be like at these other shops or something. Correct. Not yet. It's almost there. But for dispensaries in California, we're we're pretty close. It is the play here. The overall, to to tell you the the honest truth, Ash, if we can build enough interest, build it around the deck in the core areas that where we already can ship it for the thirty three states. Then we'll go to dispensaries and then we'll go to distribution. That's where the wind's going to be. So it's it's more of a loss leader, kind of a the cross that boys did. Or, this this juvie is Juvie. Where, where Juvie went D to C, but uh, I forget Sam or I forget whoever Francis's co part is that, that does all the marketing. He does a great marketing job, but um, it's penetrating these corner stores, these retail markets where uh, freight is so much better than pick and pack, especially in like 250 a camp. Like that's that's spicy. I mean, another good example is um, your boy, right? Stella, Rise. They went fully on the energy drinks, full distribution everywhere. Like, they're not even running ads on Facebook anymore. You know, like, I think they're just fully... And even Ghost. Oh, oh Ghost, yeah. It's like another good Ghost is everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. I don't like the branding, too. I, I know it's a little garish, a little, little in your face, but I kind of dig it. Yeah, everyone's pushing energy drinks now. Would you do an energy drink, Ash? We there's a couple of things that we wanted to. We have some ideas. Like there's some like clear little bit of these guys. Key, but like there is brands that like we could white label with products already. And like since we'll have the distribution at Walmart, we're hoping that can help us like uh, get us in there because we don't want to do it online. It's very tough. Yeah. Or you can do sticks, so it's not pre mixed because that's a stick pack. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. On it did that with Alpha Brain where we were gonna when I was there we were gonna do kind of like the the uh, breeze I'm gonna call it Brez just to piss them off uh, style cans um, but then we started to do the unit economic calculations and it was just like dude let's just ship sticks instead of water because it is yeah. um, aggressive. Rub drill where so breeze it's it's short for breathe easy because a lot of the issues for cannabis is when you smoke it you're like damn that really hurts but if you're able to consume it. You can breathe easier. That's not bad. I'll give you that one. Big brain, boys. Big brain. I mean, hey, you're not on ad spend unless you're big braining, folks. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, so your boy, right? David mentioned um, they saw a small decline in UGC style creatives, right? Thesis. And I feel like I've been, even when like Rob asked me, like, oh, what do you think is what's going to happen in 2023 and onwards? Like, I feel like everybody's ads look the same. Like, it's just this, like, UGC creator, the TikTok font, like, some crazy hook, and then it's, like, the ad. Like, I skip that immediately now. Like, I'm not I'm not paying attention to any of that. So, like, where do you think, I mean, constant creative, but, like, where do you think creative's going to head now? There's a reason why we didn't go UGC. Like, we we wrote we wrote a check into incense. I know you I know I think Ron wrote a check in incense. We wrote a check in incense last year or the year before, like a, a, a sizable one. Cause I believe I believe UGC is the easiest way for smaller teams to get any form of content. I do believe in that. I believe in that it's important. But it's so drowned out that I that you can see with Breeze, we're doing CGI, we're doing hardcore elevated, like not AI, but close enough to where you know like you know it's not real but it's really well done so i think a lot of graphics i think a lot of images and a lot of a lot more higher production is going to make its way back in i'm not saying you're going to go full-on commercial on facebook or instagram or tiktok even but it's definitely going to be higher produced or it's going to be back to images or videos yeah i i think like even now like i the latest round of creative that we just pushed through the team like 35 50 static images and like it's just refreshing to me because like when you don't have to write this brief, you don't have to like think about like what the creator has to say, this and that. I think like just sell the click and sell on your lander. Like you don't have to sell on social, just get the click and just get it on with it. Um, but I think to your point is a lot of like what you're seeing is so like iPhone quality shots, like low quality, whatever. The high quality stuff is going to like bleed through. Like I think that's what people are going to like start to see again and be like, oh shit, this is different now. I firmly believe this. I I, I think I think UG I think UGC's done. It will cost more, but this is we're we're still moving. And this was some, sort of a hot topic on Twitter this week, but it was like iterations is dead. Like why are you iterating on stuff? Why are you making small changes? I, we were I was huge on that. And this is why we built the entire company around how quickly you can make changes or s- subtle movements once it started working. But now 
when you have advantage plus shopping or these large give Facebook, let yeah. it do what it wants. Give all this information, all this content, let it do it. You have to have variety and differences, which means if you're going to invest the money and you need a lot of different positioning. So you don't want like that was subtly better than the other because the color was different. No, I think I think iterations now it's like not not changing like, oh, don't change the first three seconds. Like, yeah, you can change the first three seconds, but if the rest of the video is the same, people aren't going to fall into that, especially with Advantage Plus, right? Like it's constantly retargeting. Right. So like if I saw one ad in the first three seconds was somebody making a smoothie, but then like I use that ad and like I changed the first three seconds and somebody making oatmeal, right? Like I'm going to watch that, but then it's going to be the same fucking thing, right? So like you need variety, like the iterations I think have to be like, all right, here's a concept, right? Yes. And like, how do you change the, I guess, the different like frameworks of each like so you have like the hook change that then you have like a testimonial next right so you know that that framework works where it's like hook testimonial product cta change the testimonial right you know this framework works change the different things that to me is what you need to iterate not like the first three seconds and like keep the rest the same like you need completely new content all the time i have a thing on my screen right now that i think i can share this yeah, yeah. is is what it's i, I, up, I yeah. wish i wish my team would sit and play with this. Like I think my team should sit and think about this and the way that this as a builder would make the most sense. You, I just can't scale this, dude. I can't get everybody to be on the same exact page to take this, understand this and build within this. Hey, so for people that are listening, um, Shaq is throwing up a Miro board. Of course, he's using rich people software. Come on, be with the plebes. Get getting some lucid chart with the poor people. Unbelievable, this guy. So he has... Uh, three essentially formulas for the asset. So the first formula um, is hook, and this is a chronology. So asset one's chronology is hook, demo, feature one, benefit, demo, feature two, demo, solution, CTA. Asset two is hook, benefit one, valid, validation, I'm guessing. I don't know. What does yep. valid stand for? Yep, validation. Yeah, so like validate. Validating. Validate, yeah, valids. Uh, feature one, demo, CTA, and then asset three is hook, Problem one, feature one, solution one, BTI. So just to kind of, if people were listening and not watching, because we do have all these wonderful podcasts on triplewell.com or youtube.com slash triplewell. But um, that's a really cool, I mean, I think this is a perfect example for me of where AI could get into some really interesting places where I can pull out these formulas because I've actually been playing around with it in chat GPT using um, ADA, using um, yeah. the four Ps, using, you can just tell it to say, hey, make me, uh, here's, I, I have a, a breeze drink. It's THC, you know, give it the kind of high level notes and say, Hey, write briefs and X, Y, and Z framework. And then you can get these things to pitch it. But that's still an extra step of like, why couldn't there just be an AI built where I can just upload those assets in terms of that chronology? Cause that's a really like, candidly, that's a really good formula uh, or those three formulas are strong. And there's the Ash's point iterations you can make that aren't the same ad where it's like, dude, I'm changing a new benefit or I'm changing a Change new validation. Or yeah. that, exactly. Cause I, I find think a framework it, that works and just keep swapping things out. Yeah. Like that's, I think the only way to do it. So I, you asked, what do you think the direction is going to go? We talked about UGC. It's still, I still believe creative is the most important thing, but now you're going to see all this change on how many AI tools can I string together to get to the, the final production to get alive. Yep. And start testing. Like, it's going to get very close to not needing a full team other than just like the prompter and then the QA or. Yeah. And Ash, yeah. I have to ask you is, as one of the brand owners, like, well, we won't get there on the breeze side because we'll leverage agency team that we have. But if you're looking Art. at, I used to want to go hire a growth marketer or a CMO or X, put in any role. Are you now going, well, before I post this, do I need to go see if I can find the tool first? Because that's that's where I think 2023 and growth marketing and the team of marketing and the idea around marketing is going to go. It's a good question. Honestly, I don't like for me the biggest role that I feel like I need help with is just like the creative strategist to help prepare briefs, right? Like that takes up the longest time, the research, everything. AI can help me get there, but then also I still feel like it it's going to take time before that can actually replace somebody's job, right? I think somebody needs to kind of come in and direct it to get what they need. 
but I I still feel again like I I think my immersion in the whole AI thing is I've really just used Chat GPT and like a few tools that help with like voices and things like that, but nothing more than that. So I don't actually know. But right now it's like when I try to use it and create briefs, it's it's still very simple, right? It'll get me the like we always say zero to one, but I want this strategist to go one to ten and be like, all right, well here's properly what we need and then have a reasoning for the testing right ai is not going to give me its reasoning or hypothesis of what i why it's testing something and that's where you need i think that human interaction still in my opinion i agree but but even so you didn't answer it if you still need the person to do the prompts but that's it like that like all the other like they're they're going to leverage all these other tools that research it and and get get the the reviews in a clear way that they can then use and but they're going to leverage all these tools anyways. So do you need that high level person to create? Yes, I think so. I think right now you still do because you still need somebody to go in and validate what AI is pumping out and be like, okay, yeah, this is actually a good idea because I could go in and put like pull out what I need, but it's going to give me the most basic. Sh- like if I if I give direction to the AI, say like here's my super collagen protein it has all these vitamins it has this this and here's our usps it's going to give me the most basic in like what i want it to do is i wanted to think of hey instead of talking about the benefits like everybody else is why don't we talk about how this could be like a replacement for your breakfast like we have fruity cereal collagen go replace your fruit loop cereal with something a little bit healthier like the ai is not going to like come up with that it's no. going to think of collagen and collagen only but the ai could write the brief with that skeleton, I think is kind of what it can, is. it can, yeah. but I think that you still need that high level person to direct it and I agree. think of those prompts to give it. Like I, like when Shaq, when you said like, Oh, this person is going to just write the prompts and that's about it. I don't think it's just about it. I think it's everything else on top of that too. <laughs> shots fired. I dig no, it. No, no shots, but <laughs> no, I like no, it. Turn up it's, the heat. Dude, dude, it's important. Cause I know a lot of, because look, we we deal with this because when people come and interview us, like, oh, we're your costs need to be less than the cost of an in-house team. Not only do our costs need to be less than an in-house team, our costs now need to be less than an in-house person with AI tools. So we're we're having these questions, we're having these dude. these back and forth discussions, and even though the the person that would engage with us or the person that would engage with any marketer. They're thinking about this and they would never need it to be there. And then they're thinking about the economy or where it potentially could be going. And they're going like, could I make this? Could it get me close to to the outcome that I need? I just need it to be incrementally better. I don't need it to be amazing. And I can I save money doing it? So I think there's all these weird factors. I think now you're talking about this. I think it also could this it could be dependent on the size of the business too. Right? Like if it Explain. if it really was like say 2019 and we had AI and it was me, Ron, and I'll get, and I'm creating all of our like ad copy, our landing pages. I'm giving direction. I'll give like, Hey, here's the ads that I need. And like, I don't have cash to go and be like, Hey, Nick, I need to sign up for constant, but I need to do it myself. Like AI is going to help me to do that. But now that we're at a point where four years in, we're scaled up a bit and we can afford to hire somebody that can help manage the whole thing. And somebody that I can have a conversation with and still brainstorm. I don't think AI is gonna be is gonna be the one to come up with the ideas that separate you from everybody else. I don't think AI will, but that's that's the prompter, that's the auditor. But the, everything yeah. else in between, it's like input all AI versus input person, review person, and then send it. So that person is still important. I do. I agree, but the whole division, the whole team, of, of hiring a junior, that junior learns, that junior progresses, that junior grows up, and then they have more responsibility. That's like basically a senior. You leveraging AI tools that would have been a junior that's just doing what needs to be done to be a part of the team. Everybody had that. We all, all we all had that. We started somewhere, and then all of a sudden, right. it's just a bunch of seniors or the guys that know how to execute, or guys and girls that know how to execute this, versus kind of bringing up the next crop that's the part that i'm kind of worried about i'm picking up what you're putting down got it got it okay i get enough yeah <laughs> yeah let me but i mean well one too long didn't read Shaq wants to fire everybody Moani's a man of the people wants to keep you in your job but <laughs> the, the no but i agree real, i agree with Shaq. No, i, I get what he's saying Shaq. now where yeah. i think that 
the challenge for me would be, and maybe you can speak to this more, Shaq, because you run your agency, but there is this, or sometimes you can get a perception of because you didn't create it, you don't get credit for it. And I think that is less pervasive in the brand because the brand is like, hey, dude, just be more productive. If it's AI, fantastic. Whereas I feel like sometimes an agency, you need to wrap your value adds in a narrative. And if people are like, oh, you're just using AI to make my videos. Why don't I just do that? Where it's like, because you don't understand. I mean, I think this is the whole crux of the point of like, that's not where the value is. The value is what Ash is talking about and finding this unique angle. And just because I can build it out faster, better, cheaper, doesn't like degrade the output of it. But um, have you run into that of like, oh, is this AI or not AI? I want human generation only. Like, like how do you tackle that? Because I, I, I think AI is going to be transformative, not only what for Ash and the brands, but also you can augment your agency where like your cost structure totally changes essentially is what you're saying. And not only that, like candidly, you get more like what I've found with AI, the more and more I'm playing around with it is it's going to negate so much experience where a lot of these skills were only learned through experiential and experience is a function of time where it's now I don't even need to know the key concepts. I can literally get all those takeaways from the AI and then integrate it into it. So I, I think there's going to be a really interesting reskilling, but that's not here nor there. What I'm really interested in is how do you approach any kind of pushback from clients where they say, oh, we need to charge, you need to charge us less because you're using AI or anything like that. Or is that even an issue? Or is that just in my head? I think about this all the time. And I actually asked this too. It was like, if you realized that the, the, the thing that it was creating for you, human or robot, speaking as one that is human and robot, both sides, does it reduce the, the, the value or does it reduce the cost? How, how would I put this? I would call it perceived perceived value because I think the output could, the outcome output can be comparable or even better. They don't care about that. They care about it's almost sorry to cut your flow up, but it's almost no, like please. when when you give somebody something, but then if you found out that was a regift, it totally changes the framing. Totally. And so it's literally the exact same value gift. Everything is the same, but the perception is what changes. And so how are you controlling that perception or that perceived value that your company is generating? Because a lot of times that's what people care about. They want the story to go say, hey, they don't want to say, hey, oh, my agency uses AI and they can get me stuff faster. They're like, oh, well, why are we paying them so much? I think there's going to be, it, the answer is it's going to fall within the spectrum because there's there's some people that feel, in my, my opinion, of like, hey, if AI can help you be more effective and efficient and do a better job. The output, yep. the outcome should be better. So the value that you're charging or like the, oh, the perceived value should be higher. Yeah, there's going to be others going like, and there might be a little bit more an ashes camp going, I want to give as much, I have, a, I have a responsibility to give as much jobs to humans because I care about human race progression. Sure. There's going to be this spectrum of people to live on the both. And what's going to truly tell is like, at the detriment of if your business has to let go of employees, look at all like the fortune, the, the major, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Shopify's, yep. the IBMs, even, even IBM, Buzzfeed going with all of this, all this major companies that are now having to be forced to do it. If it's between make money, lose the company or continue to progress, I believe people are going to look to keep their core people that are having a strategic really thoughtful direction and find the tools to make them even better at what they're doing. So their costs won't ever change. And a lot of the time you're not even going to be seeing what's below the tip of the spear. You're just going to be that talking head that's creating all this stuff. From the brand side, right? If, if, if say Nick, we, we came to you and said, Hey, like, can you do our creatives, this and that? And I'm like, are, are you using AI or not? And you're like, yeah, like to me, I actually don't care. Like oh, as long amazing. as you're producing okay. value, for me that I can't do by myself in house or whatever it is, that's all I care about, right? Use yep. AI. That means that your job is more efficient and faster and the turnaround times are better. That doesn't mean that I should pay you any less because the value should in theory be the same, if not better. Now, if it's less, then I would expect to pay less, right? That 
less value, less pay, more value, more pay. Like it just should be as simple as that. That's beautiful, Ben. I, I hope, I hope it is because I think when you start telling people, it, my reaction, if you start using AI to get things done faster, the expectation is this better get to me faster. Like if you're yep. leveraging AI and it should yeah. make your time and everything quicker and it's not going faster or it's taking even longer to get it done, then it's actually more frustrating. So it's if you're saying you're going to use this tool to make you more efficient and better and it does it, that's a big issue. I think that's fair. For, for me, it's been really interesting to see the parallels to kind of creative output and I'll talk like image ideation, things of that nature and written output where a lot of people get really butthurt if it's written by AI or edited by AI and all this stuff. So I, 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 it's good to hear that Ash, one of the top people in D2C and killer brand operator is not, uh, is, is focused on that. So maybe I'm just in, in my head. I think in our bubble, a lot more people are aware of what AI, the implications of AI really is. But then when you go and talk to like the regular person who's on the other side of the ad, they're, it's not like top of mind, you know? So no, nah, I love that. Uh, oh my gosh, this flew by. Let's, oh man, we got to wrap up already. All right. Well, Moani has a beautiful dinner to get to. So Nick, you're the man. You came on. Thanks, you look guys. wonderful. I was late. You dropped a bunch. I just love the way your brain works too. So um, how could people follow you? How do they sign up for constant? How do they sign up for structure? This time's yours. Let the people know. Thanks, boss. Um, I am Shackleford on the Twitter. Extremely active there. We are at constant, uh, constant creative and then structure.agency. Beautiful. The man with the plan. F amazing feed. Uh, great Insta too. A fun follow. Um, before we get out of here, I have to drive by a vitamin shop, but I forget why I got to do that. Can you remind me, Ash? Drive by a vitamin shop. You're looking at your mirror and you're kind of seeing some air the ink and you're like, what do I got to do, man? So you get out of your car, you walk into a vitamin shop and you're like, damn it, I need some fruit and cereal collagen. I, the how? So let me out of the cashier, you whip your card out. You take it home and you look perfect. So, and then you and then you tweet at at Ashwin Milani with the photo. Come at on, me, at Ashwin Milani with it's the photo. A, it's a late day I'll, podcast, uh, folks. Sorry, we're off our game. <laughs> but yeah, follow me at Ashwin Milani. Uh, season two of Chew on this. We just started recording. We got some banger guests on this, so stay tuned. Dropping in June. Um, Mentor Pass, always on Mentor Pass, ready to help. So find me there. Snackleford, you on Mentor Pass? Yeah, we do a couple of things there. Oh, amazing. Well, you can also get uh, Nick's Big Brain, Ash's Big Brain. Uh, I'm on there, but I miss requests all the time. So just DM me. I'm sorry, Kenny. I'm with this. <laughs> I, I am on, I'm in Shaq jail because I, I I have like a 24 hour rule of like the besties, and uh, he, he roasted me a little bit. So I need to really lean into my uh, relationships a little bit more. But um, I'm very, very accessible. So hit me up. Uh, one last thing What's the uh, safe word? What are people going to message us for? Um, some free merch. Shaq, what's what's a word they can message us? Beep boop beep. No, it's too hip. Uh, I know you're a robot, but that's still Can you just can you send the robot emoji? Meet in the oh, our first emoji. I love it. Okay, amazing. At Robert Ray Hill, send me the robot emoji or on LinkedIn, send me the robot emoji and we will get you some fantastic whaleware sent out. If you want to get more involved with Triple Well, we're triplewell.com. Fantastic business, insights, analytics, attribution, the whole kit and caboodle, people. If you love money, you're going to love Triple Well. And then we have a fantastic newsletter. It goes out every Tuesday, Thursday. Triplewell.com slash whale mail. Sign up there. And then if you want to save a unicorn, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can watch all our podcasts there. If you want the auditory nectar, just use any podcast catcher. And then what else? We got a sister show called United Rowas. And we buried the lead. We buried the lead. Also, one of the burgeon, burgeoning stars on the Triple Well Network, Agency Algo. How do you, you're not even going to plug it? Are you, you're being modest? What are you doing over there? It's, it's killer I, um, stuff. If you, marketers and agencies, if you're looking to get more on just real conversations with other agency owners as they're growing and figuring it out, we have a great podcast on the Triple Well Network called The Agency Algorithm. All things agency stuff. A lot of unique things that we go through, and I, and I welcome you to come alongside our conversations to be fair that wasn't a bad sizzle track it was it was all impromptu too, too i can tell fantastic though amazing stuff now i mean no joking i wish this would have been around when i was uh palpitating the elephant that is agency world um it's it's really really good and um unlike a lot of grab assing that happens here on ad spend it's very tactical there's going to be uh less jokes more tactics but you know you choose what you choose you you, you come here for the smiles and the laughs Milwani will throw in a little little tactic here and there and 
life is good um dude you're the best i can't wait to see you i'm gonna get to see you in uh yeah in a couple weeks be out in geek x la make sure oh, how do people buy tickets uh geekx.com is the easiest and you'll get right prompted to our hollywood la event amazing yeah it really is an incredible experience and i'll wrap up on this i think there's one cohort of geek x attendees that you missed out on um a lot of people are just super hard working in our industry and don't vacation well um, and this can be a really awesome supplement for point. that where you can kind of come, you learn during the day so you don't feel guilty and then you get a bunch of really fun networking and they always put on a bunch of really great events. And so it feels a little bit like a vacation, but you don't feel guilty for vacationing and getting too far away from your ads manager, but you have triple L anyway, so you're tracking amazing. You guys are the best. Five over Milwaukee, but you, tell Bella I said hi to, hit, 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 we just ripped a Roaz. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. Alex and Mike, those two of my favorites at Postscript. But Shack Attack, you look great, sound great. Melwani, you brought the heat. Thanks for thanks for holding the show. Your back probably hurts, but you know, is what it is. That's what that's what we have you here for. I'm just just here for the looks. Uh, all right, folks, that's it. That's another ad spend in the books. Uh, thanks for stopping in, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.